This is Lydia, the lifestyle coach. And what I do is I help people who really are not happy with their relationship with food. Like, why did I eat that? Why did I do that? How do I stop this? And I help take them from that place to like normal eater. Food is not a big deal. Like you can just get your mental energy back, heal your relationship with food, just move on with life. That's what we do here. So welcome for those of you who are new, especially welcome and so happy that you are part of this community and this movement to really have freedom from any sort of food crazies and to just get your life back. So, so excited for our interview today. We're chatting with an amazing woman who has just had such a cool journey. Um, and I'm really excited for you guys to get to know her and her story. And she just has had so much success and has come so far in a short amount of time. And really excited for you guys to get to know her. So, Sherry, welcome to the show. Hi. Hello, hello. So thank you so much for being here and sharing your story. And let's just get started with getting to know you a little bit. Like, tell us maybe, you know, growing up or, you know, sort of your journey in life about how sort of this all started. Like, what did your relationship with food used to be like and how has it sort of evolved over the years? Well, um, growing up, I had a pretty normal relationship with food until, um, pretty much my teen years and that's when um because I kind of didn't look like the rest of my family they were all like pretty skinny and I was like I would say like pretty curvy but not really like overweight at the time but my family pretty much decided I was and I needed to go on a diet so my mom decided that I needed to go to Weight Watchers with her so I think I was about 17 at the time. And back then, Weight Watchers was very, very restrictive. You had to eat like certain foods during certain times of the day. Like it basically told you like what you had to have for breakfast, what you had to have for lunch. And I was a pretty picky eater back then. And so a lot of times I wouldn't eat because I didn't want, I didn't like what they had. So that was basically like the first time I started really I guess, kind of sneaking food because I was so hungry. And um, so that was basically my first experience with a diet. And then my mom was like just so happy because I lost like five pounds in like the first week because I basically didn't eat. Yeah. And I just, there's even already, like there's so many great things to point out here. Like I, I just want you guys to know how many of us start with this first diet, right? Even before we have any idea what the consequences of dieting, before we know that the number one you know, cause of eating disorders is dieting. It's like so many women that I talked to, their first diet was with their mom, right? So there's that. And then there's you know, creating shame around food, right? Like Sherry, you were saying like you were sneaking food, right? Like all of a sudden, food becomes this thing that isn't okay. And then all this praise of like, oh, you lost five pounds. And then we start getting all these messages of like, oh, okay, this is something good. Like, oh, I'm, people are proud of me. People are valuing that, I, that I'm losing weight. Like all of these sorts of elements, you guys, are really common on the way to really what happens with our relationship with food. So yeah. So from there, Sherry, that was like your first, your first diet. And then what, you know, you started losing a little bit of weight. Where did it go from there? And that's basically when I learned what, like before that I thought food was just food. Then food became either a good food or a bad food. So then when I went to college, then I started kind of, because I was away from home, eating a lot of what was I considered bad food. And I gained weight. So then I did become overweight. And so then I really did need to do the dieting. So then became the diet binging cycle because then I would sneak food or I would just basically eat when nobody else was around because I felt like ashamed to eat what I considered bad food in front of other people. Cause I kept getting those messages from my family 
like there was this like I remember still to this day this one time for my birthday my sister bought me a pair of pants and she basically told me that if I can't fit in that size pants then I better go on a diet again because that would mean I'm too fat not that our sizing is crazy because you can be all you can be like a range of three different sizes depending on the maker of the clips oh yeah absolutely and I think more and more these days like yeah like there there are like 10 sizes between for me that I can wear pants in right and it's like I'm not 10 sizes all in one person so it's like what a message right of like oh being able to fit in these means what you have to do the choices that you need to make the way that you have to eat and I love that you pointed out that like the weight that you gained was eating the bad foods right mm -hmm. there was a morality around food there was a label and that didn't help your relationship with food right <laughs> no yeah even until i started with you i still had this idea in my brain of good food bad food because pretty much every diet i went on had that idea of like what was good food what was bad food what you should eat what you shouldn't eat so I've pretty much been dieting on and off for like the past 25 years. And I never knew that the dieting is what was leading me to the binging. So I'd have these cycles where I do really well for like a few years. And then it just got to the point where I just couldn't diet anymore. It just was more binging. And I, took diet pills. I would like starve myself over exercise until I hurt my back and I couldn't do that anymore. I am, um, I never able, I was never able to do the purging part of it. I could never make myself throw up. Not that I, I did try though, but it just never worked for me. I did the laxatives. I pretty much tried everything. Yeah. And I also did pretty much every diet that you could think of. I, you know, and ephedra was like my best friend. And I was like so sad when ephedra went off the market because basically then I was never hungry. So food was a non-issue basically then because it just shut the chatter down. Yeah, and at, at what cost? Like, you know, it's like all of these things, right? It's like with what ephedra does to your body and exercising until you're hurting your back, like just, the struggle, right, of like what we do to try to make up for the bad foods that we eat is just like such, it takes so much time in life, takes so much energy, takes our, our health, like, and it is, it's, it's this crazy journey that goes for so long when we don't fix it. So um, for you, like you said, you know, for a long time, you, you were doing the, the yo-yo back and forth, you know, the restricting, the binging. How long until you just couldn't diet anymore? Until like those options were just gone for you? Um, basically until this last year, it just got to the point where I could diet maybe for like a month and then it was like these last, I could lose maybe 10 pounds, then they would come back. Like I originally lost a hundred pounds that I like gained over the years from the binging. And then I gained 50 of them back and I never could lose those 50. I could lose like 10 of them and then they would come back again because I just couldn't stop the binging cycle anymore. No matter what I would try to do, it just wouldn't, I could be good for a little while. See, I'm using the good and bad again. Well, I was going to say, yep, yeah, there you <laughs> I mean, I could diet for a little while, but then I just, it just wouldn't work for me anymore. I just had enough. Yeah. And thank you so much for sharing that, Sherry, because this is something that's so important to understand about the cycle is like, we start out with more options like, oh, well, I can take diet pills or I can go on a diet or I can exercise. And we have this sort of feeling like we have things under control and then the binging gets worse and then the dieting has to get more extreme and then you know we get an injury 
and oh, all of a sudden that's not an option. So now I need to do more diet pills or I need to starve myself even more. So notice how like our options and our life gets smaller and smaller and smaller Mm -hmm. until it's like, oh, well now I've hurt my body. You know, sometimes we lose our health. Sometimes we wreck our metabolism. You know, sometimes we um, just aren't able to, you know, stick with the diet anymore. Our bodies are in such a, a fight place. Sometimes we develop an autoimmune disorder. Like there are things that will happen because your body is fighting for you to not starve anymore. It's one of the strongest mechanisms we have in our brains and our bodies to not starve anymore. So, you know, our options, it's not like, hey, well, I'll just keep this under control by doing the same thing forever. Your options of what you can do get smaller and smaller and smaller. So I appreciate you sharing that. That's a great illustration, Sherry, of just like, hey, it got to a point where like, you just couldn't diet anymore, right? Right. So then what do you do? Like, how did you feel as your options got smaller? I just felt like hopeless because there was nothing I felt left for me to try. And like you said, with the health, I was getting like daily migraines pretty much that would just not go away. Yeah. From all the stress and from the fact that I couldn't starve myself because then it would trigger a migraine or binging on certain foods would cause a migraine. It just seemed like it was like an endless cycle of whatever I did seemed to trigger something. So I just felt like there was like nothing else left for me. Yeah. And I know that's, that is such a hard place to be in. Like, just like that. I talked to so many women who it's just like, what else can I do? Cause all of this was work, like the working out and the diet pills, like all of that was work. You were trying stuff, right? But it's like mm-hmm. your, your body's fighting back. You're getting the migraines. And then like, what do you do? So it's like, Tell us a little bit, Sherry, about what life was like for you um, before, you know, we were, we were able to connect. Like, what were the binges looking like? How is this impacting your life to be in this cycle? Um, the binges were like pretty much almost daily. I would say there's probably like at least four times a week, maybe five. And pretty much any time I had any stress, they would happen. And what I would try to do, because they've always said that, you know, you shouldn't keep like your trigger foods in the house. I wouldn't have things at home. So what would happen is basically when I'd have a bad day at work, I would basically stop on my way home from work to get my binge foods. So I'd be stopping at the grocery store, at least, like I said, like maybe four times a week spending like at least $20, $25 ordering. I mean, not ordering, getting food. Or if that wasn't happening, I would like be ordering pizza because pizza was one of my biggest binge foods. And then just eating until I made myself sick, basically. Until I like felt like so full that I couldn't move. Or I just wanted to sleep. Yeah. And this was four times a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On average, pretty much four times a week. Yeah. So just to, just to kind of show like how, how these sorts of cycles add up in our life. So $25, four times a week, right? So that's a hundred dollars a week on just the binge food. So in a year, you know, that's $5,200 on just binge food. And so when we take these sorts of daily behaviors that we're in, and then we look at like, wow, like what does this, this look like? You know, it's like, all the things that it takes from us, the ways that it adds up. But on the other side, it's really cool to see what we get back in our life, you know, when we don't do that anymore. And we can talk about that too. But any other way that you just remember feeling or ways that this was impacting your life to have this like, you know, more than not, you know, most of the week, you know, feeling just exhausted and in pain and full and, you know, everything that you were putting toward that. How else was it impacting you, Sherry? It was just a struggle just to make it to work every day. I work with um, little kids. I work with like five-year-olds and just like making it through a day with them was just so exhausting. I mean, especially if I had to like make it through work with a migraine, which happened a lot since I was binging or stressing out about binging. So, I mean, just like making it through work every day was a struggle. 
I wouldn't go out anywhere. So I was constantly turning down invitations to go out with friends. I kind of um, isolated myself from my family a lot as well. Didn't do a lot of family things. I pretty much became a hermit. And just because I had no energy, it just, you know, binging and going to work basically took all my energy. Just so to, you know. like a life of work with a migraine and binging when you got home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a really tough place to be in. And I can absolutely appreciate that. Like that is really hard. So how long, how long did that go on and what were you trying to, to try to fix this? Um, besides trying, um, continuing to try the dieting thing, um, I tried hypnosis then. That was one of the last things. And then somehow I stumbled across the Brain Over Binge book. And I read that. And it made a lot of sense to me, but somehow I just couldn't quite, inter um, quite make it work in real life for me. And... I looked online to see if there was more information about how, or if she had any videos or anything. And then I found you online. I started Yay. watching a whole bunch of your videos. And I try, you know, about the, you know, the lower brain and the higher, you know, higher brain. And tried getting that to work and it worked a little bit, but still I felt like I needed something more. And then one day I got this like, um, little letter thing from you inviting me to have one of those 45 minute sessions. And I'm like, Oh, I have to do this. So, cause I'm like, I just, maybe this is finally the answer for me, but I still was kind of skeptical about it. I'm like, well, let's see what, you know, it's free. So I'll just try it. I don't know if this is going to do anything for me because so far it's still not really working. Cause I really truly thought I was broken. Yeah. And nothing was going to work long-term that because it seemed like so far nothing ever did so I call, um I signed up for it and I talked to Andrea yeah shout out <laughs> yeah, amazing and she really like helped me see a lot of clarity and you know what she said made a lot of sense and I'm like oh oh yeah so then I signed up for your program and my life has totally changed since then. Yes. Beautiful. So that was like the great part of the story where, and I want to say, Sherry, how proud of you I am um, for taking that step. Like not everyone takes that step, right? Like a lot of people, you know, they gather, they gather tools or they do things here and there, but like you decided that enough was enough, right? Mm -hmm. Like your life was yeah. down to like binging and working with a migraine, right? And you decided in the face of this thought of like, I'm broken, right? I, it's so amazing. One of the things that I hear from, you know, the people graduating from the program who were just like, you know, done with their binge eating or done with their bulimia after, you know, 25, 35 years, like there's so much great stuff about that. And usually the number one thing that I hear is people just saying, it's just so nice to know that I'm not broken that's one of the top things. It's like, it's not the thousands of dollars that they're saving and their health is back. I mean, all that is good too, but it's just like, just to know that, Oh, Oh, I'm not broken. Like, yeah, I can get better. Like that's a huge thing. So, so excited for you. You decided to make a change. How is your relationship with food different now? I just do not think about food anymore. I mean, food used to just control my mind most of the time. I would pretty much think about food from the time I woke up to pretty much the time I went to bed. Like either what am I going to eat or what am I not going to eat? How many calories does this have? Did I, you know, ruin, you know, did I blow the day promising to do better the next day? Cause I kind of, I'm a perfectionist and I'm, I realized that I was kind of all or nothing with everything. So, I mean, it's just food kind of is back to the way it was before I realized I was, on my first diet, it's just food. There is no good or bad food anymore. It's just food is food. Yeah. 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 And when you first started the program, like, how did you, how did you feel going into it? Like, were you just like, Hey, gung ho, like, let's just go in it. Or were you skeptical or like, how did you feel first coming into the program? I mean, 
part of me was skeptical, but I still, you know, since I had spent all that money to do it, I mean, it was like a big commitment. I'm like, I'm just going to do everything I'm supposed to. And, you know, I'm really going to give it my all. But a little part of me still kind of thought I was broken. And I thought it might not work for me. But right away, I started seeing some changes. So pretty quickly, I started to see that it was starting to work. Because like before I started, I really didn't hear chatter. It was more like just now I realized it was more like just feelings. But pretty quickly, you got me to like start hearing the chatter and being able to call it out. So that was pretty amazing that pretty quickly I could start, you know, calling out the chatter that I, that was like part of the missing piece that I couldn't do on my own because I really didn't hear it. It was more feelings in the beginning. Yeah. So, so neat. So about how long was it Sherry um, that you had started into the program before you started seeing results and a change for you? I would say by like the second week, I started hearing more of the chatter and I started being able to call out at least like the first layer, you know, maybe I couldn't get down to like the meta chatter yet, but at least I was like hearing the chatter more. Yeah. You know, hearing it tell me that I needed to binge and I needed to do it because of this or that or because. And how quickly did you start seeing a change in your binging? Um, by the second week. Yeah. And how long before you felt like you were, wow, I think I'm done with my binging? I would say like I pretty much like by maybe the fourth week, I think I had like one more, what I would call probably like a started to have one more like true binge. And then while I was having it, I'm like, I realized I didn't want to do it and it wasn't the same anymore. I didn't get the same pleasure out of it anymore. And I kind of, I'm like, my higher brain is like, why are you doing this? This isn't fun anymore. This doesn't make you feel good. So then it, kind of, then it just stopped. I'm like, I was able to figure out I was doing it for a totally different reason. It just Yay. didn't enjoy. It was like I was doing it to either avoid something or because I was feeling sad or something else. And I'm like, it's not going to make you feel better. So why are you doing it anymore? That is so fun. Had that ever happened before? No. Once I started a binge, I would never stop. Yeah. I wouldn't stop. Once it started, it was like, oh, well, you're already doing it. So you've already blown it. You might as well just keep doing it. Yeah. So to stop like mid binge and then to just be like, Oh, I'm done. Like four weeks. Cool. <laughs> that is so beautiful. And how long had it been that you had struggled with food before that? Since I was like, I pretty much since I was like, a, maybe like 18, 19, at least 25 years. Wow. Much. I so mean, like I said, there are years times in between that I could maybe control it for a while. Like if there was like a specific diet I was on, like if counting calories or maybe I did Weight Watcher points for a while, but I always had to do something really restrictive. I never could kind of like trust myself, like to not weigh or measure my food, to not like constantly weigh myself you know, to not look at the calories on every single thing I bought. So I never could like let go of any of that stuff. Yeah. And I just want to like put an exclamation point on that, that dieting works. Dieting works to lose weight. Dieting works to change your eating habits for a minute, for maybe a few days or even a few months. But did your relationship with food ever change or get better after the diet? No. It never changed. Yeah. Very cool. 
I just, I love hearing just how far you've come. So what else are you celebrating? Like Sherry, what are you enjoying in life now? Like how are things different? How's work different? How's just life different? Um, I just have so much more energy. I just feel happy because um, I'm just have the energy to do things that I want to do. I feel like I'm not letting myself down, not making promises to myself anymore. I feel like I can just, um, I have more self-confidence because I feel like I, I'm not letting myself down, I guess. I basically, I think I just said that. And I just have the energy to like run around and follow my little kids all around. And I'm not getting headaches any, hardly anymore, which is great. I don't have those daily migraines, so I'm not having to medicate myself all the time, which is, I love that part of it. So I just feel so much more healthy. And I'm going out with my friends again and seeing my family again. So I'm not a hermit anymore either, which is so fun. That is so beautiful. Yay. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Like what a turnaround, right? It's like you're, you're going out, you're happy, you're having fun. Your migraines are gone. Like mm -hmm. it makes a huge difference to not be a binge eater anymore. Right? Yes. Yeah. It is such a beautiful thing. I love it. Anything else that's coming to your mind that you're just excited about that you're celebrating? Um, just that I don't feel broken anymore. That I never thought this could be possible and to do it in like two months. I mean, I went to therapy for years, like trying to like, they put me on depression medication, telling me I was depressed, that I had all these like issues that were causing me to eat and because I was depressed and I must have like childhood scars and all these things. And it never made a difference with my eating. And actually never made a difference at all, really. But, <laughs> and just to think that I could be free of binge eating in two months is like, I never thought it could be possible. That is so beautiful. I love it. And I just want to say congratulations. I mean, Sherry, you have done the work. You're doing the work. I am so happy to see just your life blossom and who you are and just get more of you. Like the world needs you. The, those little kids need you. Your friends need you. It's like they have you now that you don't have this habit. And congratulations on your $5,000 raise every year. Yay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> More money to do fun things. There you go. Like it's like all, all fun, good things. So I just love it. Like what would you say just for those who are on the other side of it that have maybe been struggling for a long time and are looking for hope? Like what would you say to those, those watching? I would say just to not give up and that to not believe that you're not broken and just that to do this. It's the best thing that I've ever done because I feel like I was probably one of the most skeptical people ever. I think that I, looking back, I really was pretty much in a bad place and I was pretty much negative about everything. And if I, could, be, could do this, I think anyone can do it. That it is amazing and your principles can work for anything. Because I find that I'm calling out the chatter now on other things. It just doesn't work with food, it can work for anything. That is so beautiful. And what's next for you? Like, where are we going from here? I don't know where we're going from here, but I'm looking, I'm excited about it. I know we're going, we're going to be using those principles, right? To call out other, to 
improve my life in other ways. Oh yeah. So fun. So just for those of you who don't know, you probably don't know this exists because it's by invitation only, but I'm um, Sherry qualified and she's part of our VIP program. So we are going to just use these principles that helped her to be completely done with her binge eating. And it's really about rebuilding your brain, like taking all these different areas of life and applying those principles that don't just work for like getting food out of your life, but like every thing that we do, everything we struggle with is just a habit of thought. So we change those habits of thoughts to like, you know, feel great about our bodies and our careers and take risks where we wouldn't have before and being able to move forward and achieve things that we want to do. And it's just like, it's really fun to see what happens. So yeah, we're just, the party goes on. We're just still having fun. And it's just, you know, been such a, a joy coaching you and, you know, continues to be. Sherry, like it is been so fun to get to know you and anything else on your mind that you want to celebrate or say while we're chatting today um just that your program is so amazing and I think you are such a wonderful coach that you just make talking to you so easy and so comfortable that you just make um, any question not seem dumb <laughs> and thank you for giving me my life back. That means so much. Ah, I'm getting all eclipsed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I really mean it. I really feel like I have my life back. That is a beautiful thing. And I'm so happy for you. And I'm so proud of you. And thank you, Sherry, for being you, for being open, for sharing your story. Like I was in that exact same place where I wondered, am I going to die a binge eater? Where I wondered if there, you know, if there was a way to ever not be broken anymore. Cause I was sure that I was broken. Right. Cause it's like, why me who, you know, could figure out other things in life, couldn't figure this out. And like, there had to be something really wrong with me. Like just all of those terrible nights, just being in pain after eating so much food and knowing the whole time that I didn't want to, like feeling so out of control, like that freedom on the other side, like it really does give your life back. And I'm so happy for you that you have your life back and like more people get their life back. Like you could totally do it. Like have a hope in that because it is so possible and it's, it's more simple than you think, but doing what's effective works so well. Doing what's not effective is a lifetime of not seeing results. You know what I mean? So it's like do what works. And I love that you've been able to share your story. And I know that so many people listening, this is going to be important for them. Um, and I just want to celebrate you, Sherry. Like, I'm so, so happy for you. Beautiful. Thank you. All right. Anything else to make this complete? Or do you feel like our chat today is complete? I feel like our chat is complete. And I just look forward to more adventures with you. Getting, building my brain now. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so fun. Well, Sherry, thank you for being on. Congratulations again. So happy for you. And this is Sherry and Lydia, the lifestyle coach signing off. Mwah! And you can go to www.lydiawenty.com slash apply. We actually still have some openings. Um, we try to open up as much time that we, as we can. Um, there's a huge demand. So we, I mean, we had over 70 women apply for the program in just a few days um, and for uh, these free sessions. So we're trying to open up as much time as possible. If you pop over to lydiawenty.com slash apply, um, let the calendar load. And then if there is an available spot, snatch it up. Um, we would love to be able to help you um, on your journey and get you that first step with that free session so that you can get the foundation of getting started in just recovery and being able to be a free woman as Sherry now is. So it's a lovely thing. I'm so just happy to be part of this work. So proud of you for taking these steps and way to go guys. Keep hope, keep going, just as Sherry said, and we will go from there and we'll talk soon. Bye guys. You have so many options. You can watch more videos. 
You can subscribe for new videos every Monday. You can even join our Facebook group with an amazing support community.